What is good everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some of my top secrets in the streetwear world, basically some streetwear hacks that I want to share with you. I've had a bunch of these for a while but I didn't have enough to compile them into one big video and that video is here. Hopefully you guys don't know all of these. I think there's some secrets that you might not know about and let's go ahead jump into it. One of the first hacks up is going to be something that I actually learned from my good friend Jacob Star or the Star Life. I've been talking about him in a lot of videos recently. He is one of my greatest friends when it comes to YouTube. We FaceTime all the time. We'll FaceTime for hours. He is a really cool dude and basically I found out this thing through one of his recent videos that it just blew my mind and I thought I want to share this with my followers. So I asked him, you know, can I put this in my video? He said, of course. But if you know Jacob, he wants me to plug his Instagram. So we'll put it down below if you want to follow him there. But what this is, is when you travel, you're taking a bunch of clothes and most of the time you have to decide what you want to bring and you have to condense if you don't have enough space to bring whatever you want to bring. So what I have found out through Jacob, and I don't know exactly how he found it, is you can basically air seal, proper term, or probably vacuum seal your clothing, but you can do it with regular bags. So I have a few bags here, and then this one is just a regular Ziploc bag. It's a little bit smaller, so it's a gallon Ziploc bag. I think you can maybe get them a little bit bigger. Or I have a lot of clothes coming in from different companies, and they come most of the time in big zip bags like this. So basically you have a huge bag like this. This one is actually not gonna work. I just found out because there is a rip in it. I will find a bag that will work. Basically this is a huge bag. You can fit multiple, multiple t-shirts in here. So essentially what you're doing is going to be folding up the clothes in a certain manner and then you're gonna be pressing the air out. Now I'm gonna put an overlay clip of this so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing at a better angle. I'm about to put some in a bag right now and then show you guys how much it condensed it. So the overlay clip is definitely gonna be a better example of what you can do for this, but I just grabbed three shirts and did this while I sat here off camera and put them in this bag and it even looks like it's air sealed. It looks like it was sealed with a vacuum, but all I did was really I sat on it and pushed all the air out and then zipped it closed. So look at that. It's like the size of one shirt and you have three shirts in here. So basically I'll grab this shirt right here and I'm gonna fold it up and then show you guys just like difference in the height of it when you're packing it. So if this is a standard shirt you're gonna pack, obviously it'll get squished down a little bit, but this is three. I mean, this is gonna be a little bit thicker, but overall, as far as sizing goes, you have a lot more room when you put them in bags like this. Also, it's kind of like a protectant because if you have like mouthwash or anything liquid like lotion or anything that just pops out in your bag, it could ruin, you know, your shirt. You never know what's gonna happen. I've had mouthwash spill in a bag before and luckily I had, you know, a pop kit to have it inside of it, but you just really never know what can happen on a flight or when you're traveling. So that'll protect it in that sense as well. Keep anything out of it if anything decides to get in your bag. I don't know. I just think it's a cool idea and when I saw that he did it, I just thought that was super cool and you could do it with literally Ziploc bags. You don't need designer bags or anything like that. Okay, just want to add in you don't have to do three shirts in a bag as well. You can do individually wrapped. So I did a little bit here like that with these two shirts. And you guys, I mean, there's some other ones over here. It makes it a little bit easier. It's not going to save you like half of a bag's worth of space, but it will save you a decent amount of space to where you could add maybe one or two extra shirts or a jacket or something like that. Next hack up is gonna be one that is on your phone and it's something that I just recently, you know, got really in depth in and found more information out about. And I've had the app on my phone forever. It's free app, StockX. So you guys are into buying or selling sneakers, clothing, anything like that. You know about StockX. It's a place to buy, sell shoes, Supreme, different things like that. They have their ways of authenticating it. So it's a little bit more, you know, safe than going on an eBay route just because it's more transparent as far as the prices go, as far as the authenticity, because you get like a tag that shows you if it's authenticated or anything like that. But that's what the majority of people know StockX for. That's what I initially thought it was. But then I looked deeper into the app and there's just more stuff that I didn't really notice until one of my friends started showing me about it. And so that is when you go into your account, there is the portfolio section, which I literally did not know much about. What you can do here is you can enter in the different items that you have like personally. So if you have shoes, different things like that. So right now I've got a few of my things entered. I have 19 things entered in and it tells you the market value. It tells you how much you gained or lost on all of the items, the average price, the ranks, different things like that. Basically what you can do is enter in any of the different information that you have on your different shoes, clothing that they have on the app and it will show you the current value. You can compare that to what they're selling at now. For example, with these Oxford Tans, when I bought them, I paid $790 and I bought them in December of 2015. You put the date in and I could put the condition in. So you put them in dead stock, you can put the condition and they'll show you the actual market value for it. And so now the market value is $926 in that condition. And so I've made $136. What I like about that is if you have a shoe that you bought really cheap and you didn't realize how much it was going up, 
you actually can go ahead and decide to flip it. It's just kind of like a game. The friend that showed it to me actually is like checking it every other day just to see like how good he's doing as far as the prices go and if he got a good deal and everything like that, which I thought was just really cool because it is really like a game. You just go back and check different things. So like the Supreme sweatshirt I'm wearing right now, I bought it for, I think it was 168, so that's what I put in and I put it as brand new. Now it's not brand new. And the price now is $513, so my price is at $345. And you can actually sell it now on there. So there's like a button that shows you can sell it now. You can ask, sell it now, anything like that. Which I just think is like really cool. It blew my mind. Like I sat there and I literally thought to myself, like this is such a cool idea. And I didn't know that any other apps weren't doing this. So I'll just go really quick and show you guys an example. So what I'm doing is the shoes I bought. Actually, I don't want to show you the shoes I bought. So I'm going to show you guys a shoe that I want that I haven't bought yet. So one of the things that I want that I just, I guess, this is one that I'm not gonna pay the price for. I'm gonna put the Prestos in from the Nike Off-White collab. So basically you go on here, select the size. I'll go for a size 11. I'll put dead stock, the purchase date, January 2018, purchase price. Let's say I got a good deal from one of you guys and I paid 500 bucks. I add it to my portfolio. I go into it, go back to my portfolio. It updates it automatically. The value of it right now is at 1021 and so I would be a positive $521, which would be like an incentive for me to sell because you can see where you're at. So for the majority of the stuff that I enter my market value, you can see what it is. Clearly, I'm not going to hide what I have. You know, these are a bunch of different shoes and I paid certain prices for certain ones of them. You can change it by the market value, low to high, like the Supreme Red Flask. I paid 54 bucks, up $32. Not something that I really want to sell just because it's not that much. Shows you the item count, the market value. It's just like, I've never seen a sneaker app that has this. And when I found out about it, I was just like, this is insane. So that's just one of the little hacks that I wanted to show you guys just because I thought it was cool. So I'm gonna be doing a video on the shoes that I bought and showing you like me buying it and stuff and getting through that process coming up in the next few weeks when I get the shoes in. Right now the shoes are shipped and they're waiting to get to StockX to be authenticated and then coming to me. So we'll have to wait for that. But I thought it was cool to show you guys in the app because you can download it like literally it's for free. So I will put a link down below because you know, your boy wants to hook you guys up. Download the app and you can go ahead and join it. And you can see some of the features that they have. And of course I will show you guys again the shoes that I get in next week. Next hack up is gonna be one that I thought about that I've done for a while now, and I didn't know if anybody else kind of had this issue. When I travel, I tend to buy shoes or I'll buy something new. Most of the time it would be shoes. So like last time I went to LA, I left with an extra pair of blazers and an extra pair of Revenge Storms. Two more pairs of shoes than I came with and I did not even have any room in my suitcase when I got there. So I'm not one to throw away my boxes. I just like keeping my boxes. I have them all in my closet. So I wanted to find a way to bring that back without having to pay for shipping it and all that stuff. And the one time when I was coming back, I figured what I could do is bring the box with me in a certain way that I'm gonna show you right now. One of the things too, that I don't know if you guys know about, I'm not one to let my shoes touch my clothes. I think it's pretty nasty, but I got these like dust bags. These came from an Adidas shoe, but you can use like really like Ziploc bags or anything like that. I just use these dust bags and I put my shoes in them because I don't want my shoes touching my clothes because my shoes go in the bathroom. My shoes go everywhere and I just, you know, I don't want that touching my clothing. Some of you guys might not be like that. Some of you guys might touch the bottom of your shoes. I just, I can't, I don't know why, that's just me. So I put them in a bag like this and this has helped me put them in there. And I guess it condenses them a little bit as well. And again, you can use any kind of bag for that. I used like grocery bags back in the day before I had dust bags. But let's say you have the shoes right here. Well, this is the box and you wanna put it in your bag. It takes up a lot of room to get crushed. What I found is that all of these bags can just be broken down and you can make them completely flat and put them in a bag. You can take out the paper, save that. All of them have a way, like this specific one, you literally just like pull up on this and all of them can be put back in their original form. Like there's no like secret formula to like these boxes being put together. They literally are just folded up and they're put together in the factory regardless. So you can take them out and put them together. It's not really a tricky thing or anything like that. And so what I'll do like right here, I'll break it down again. I'll put like overlay clips in this so you guys can see. I'll just fold it as like much condensing as I can. You'll get something like this and I put it at the bottom of my bag and then it literally is taking up zero room. So I get to bring this back. Now, of course, you might not have room for the shoes, but that's where coming in with the clothing, you can condense it a little bit more, save a little bit of room. Then the last hack up that I wanted to share with you guys, which you guys have asked me for literally years now how I do this. And it is one of those things that you can maybe Google or anything like that, but I just have a few tricks that I've just done for myself for the longest time. And that's with getting no wrinkles in your clothes and not shrinking your clothes. Because when you have, you know, nicer pieces and like sweatshirts that fit you perfect, obviously you don't want to lose that fit. And when you take clothes and you wash them, you stick them in the dryer with heat, 
they're gonna shrink and most of the clothing are gonna shrink and it's an issue because I've had a lot of clothes that I didn't want to shrink just shrink horribly. So some of the few things that you can do for this is going to be hangers. Of course, you could take it straight out of the washer, put it on a hanger, let it dry. Most of the time, it'll have a little bit of wrinkles still left in it. So what I like to do is I'll take just the individual pieces that I want to have no wrinkles and keep that shape. I'll put it on low or medium heat. You can put it on air if you don't want any heat at all. Low or medium heat, and I'll put it in there for literally two minutes. So it's still gonna be damp, it's still gonna be wet, but it's gonna get those initial wrinkles out and you know you could throw in a dryer sheet or anything like that. Then you take the shirt out, put it on a hanger, and you let it dry. One of the things too, if you wanna stretch it out a little bit, if you think it shrunk, is you can literally pull it while it's damp and it'll hold that shape once it dries. So again, I just put it in there for literally about two minutes on heat and then I just pulled it out and there's a little bit of wrinkles here and there. I just pulled them out like this. If there's a little bit left, you can leave it in there a little bit longer. Of course, I don't want anything to stretch, but typically I have best options when I do this. And I didn't do this one inside out, but I could have done it inside out. And more of the wrinkles would be on the outside when you pull it out rather than the inside, if that makes any sense. But that's just, you know, this is good for me. And typically once it all dries and everything like that, it's usually feeling nice and no wrinkles. Again, if you want to stretch anything out, you just literally pull on it like this in the hanger or you can hold on to the collar up here. And typically that's how I have the best results. And it also gets wrinkles out if you guys don't want any wrinkles. I also didn't put any of the dryer sheets in there when I just did that. So it does take a little bit longer that way, but it's just if you don't want any wrinkles and you don't want anything to mess up your shirts like that, I think that's the best option that I've had for a couple years now. And that's just things that I've gone through because I've shrunk a lot of shirts. I've wanted shirts to get longer, bigger. So I think even if you have like 100% cotton shirt and it's just a little bit small, if you wash it and then you stretch it out and let it damp dry, you can maybe get a little bit more length out of it. But that's just something it might stretch some of the logos or anything. Like that. I, I'm not gonna be the one to tell you to stretch out your shirts, but that's just what I've done when I've had like plain tees that just didn't fit me 100% properly. Also washing them inside out if you have logos, I've heard that that helps with not cracking and different things on logo. And if you do dry the shirts with like logos and stuff on them that are screen printed, if you dry them a lot, it will ruin the screen print. I've had that happen for a lot of shirts that have cheaper screen print, but that's just something that you could watch out for. I usually don't put any shirts that I wear on a regular basis that I really like that aren't just like sleeping shirts. I will go ahead and not throw them in the dryer for a full cycle just because I don't want them to shrink at all. So there are some of my hacks that I wanted to share with you guys. If you have any hacks that I don't know about that you guys want to include and maybe I can include it in a video coming up, let me know down below because I'd like to share some more with you guys if you have some that I have not found yet. And if you guys are new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. I post all all kinds of streetwear content and if you guys enjoy it you can go ahead and subscribe leave a like on this video i will see you guys next time again follow me on my almost socials down below i don't know what i just said but i'll see you guys next time this is harrison signing out